be blessed in Jesus' name. God bless you for your dedication. To sit and listen to the word of God in this heat. And thank you for that song. You, you in these churches, you have proved that. They will know that we are Christians by our love. One other short story and I will continue. I just sent a video of that song to my wife. And when I was pulling through my contacts to pull up that uh, my wife's contact, I remembered a story. There was a time that I was texting one of my friends. And uh, that friend's name was Weston. 
to wannan mutumin sunan shi kuma western and i sent a a text to my wife and i mistakenly sent it to him to wannan sakon da na turawa mata na sai na kuskure na tura mi shi and it was a loving text kuma shi wannan sako na kauna na soyayya ne i will see you tomorrow so ana kana yana kewar ki a zan gan ki gobe and that was before whatsapp amma lokacin kafin whatsapp yanzu ne so there was no way to delete it bayan da kuma zaka iya ka cire shi i realized that i sent it to my friend sai na gane cewa na tura wa aboki na ne so i quickly called him to apologize so na kira shi ce mi shi ya hakuri and he told me how did you send it to my name sai ce ta yaya ka tura mini wannan sakon ta wannan but your contact and my wife's contact are next to each other sai ce ai Number one way and the number ta na yana nan kusa da juna ne. But your wife's contact should be under Christy not under W. Sai ya ce ai to sunan matan ka ya kamata ya zama a ta wurin number C ne Christian amma ba W ba. I said please since I first had a mobile phone. Sai ya ce tun da ran da ya fara samu waya. My wife has been stored in my phone under wife for life. Mata number mata na na sashi da suna mata har duniya ya kare amen amen so that is how my wife's number is still stored how can is no number mata na har yau a waya na wife for life mata na rayuwa gabaki daya amen amen we thank god for his word mun gode allah da kalmar sa and we want to continue to look at it muna so mu ci gaba da duba ciki we are going to go to the book of deuteronomy zamu shiga mai mai tawon shari'a but i want to tell you a story first amma ina son ga muku labari tukuna um this story comes from second kings chapter 10 wana labarin ya zo daga sarakuna ta 2 aya 10 and to jeremiah chapter 35 da kuma litafin irmiya 25 this is the story of the family of rekab wannan tarihi ne na famu na iyali wanda ana kiran su recap and in this story a wannan labari we are told that mr recap was a mighty man an ga mana cewa shi recap din babban mutumi ne jarumi ne when king jehu was overthrowing the idol of baal lokacin da shi sarkin jehu yana yana rushar da gumaka na israila the one who was working with him wanda yake aiki tare da shi was a son of recap dan she dane a wurin recap i don't know much about mr recap ban san abu dawa akan shi wannan mutumi recap din but the bible tells us that he called his family together amma litafi yace mana shi ya kira iyalin shi ga waki daya and he made a list of rules or guidelines for his family sai ya samu dokoki na iyalin nan da za a bi he told his family ya ga wa iyalin sa this is how you are going to live haka ne za ku yi rayuwa i want you to live in tents ina so ku yi rayuwa a cikin buka i don't want you to spend money building houses bana so ku kashe kudi a gine gine i don't want any of you bana so kowane dayan ku to be involved of the drinking ya shiga ya sha ruwan inabi that is our family law wannan shine dokan mu na iyali i don't want you bana so ku to have farms ku yi sa ku yi samu gonaki i want you to roam with your animals ina so ku yi ta tafiya da dabobin ku maybe how some of our fulanis do kamar yanda wansu fulani mu yanzu suke yi and those were the laws that he gave to his children wannan shine dokokin da ya ba wa yayan sa this is in the book of second kings wannan a sarakuna ta biyu ne now you move forward through the old testament to the book of jeremiah idan ka kara gaba ka zo har zuwa litafin irmiya god is trying to set an example for the children of israel Ubangiji na so ya sa misali wa yayin Israila. God says to the children of Israel. Ubangiji ya ce wa yayin Israila. I have been giving you my laws. Na ita ba ku dokoki na. I have been giving you directions. Na so ita ba ku hanyar da za ku yi tafiya. But you don't follow me. Amma ba ku abi ta farkin nan. So now I'm going to do something. Amma yanzu zan yi wani abu. To show you an example. Domin in nuna muku misali. And so one day, sai rana daya, Jeremiah called. Irmiya ya kira. The great 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 grandchildren. Ya kira kakane kakane rika. Narika Narika and he brought them into the temple Sai ya kawo su zuwa sujada I have invited you to a party Sai ya ce ana gaice ku ne ku zo mu yi biki Today we are going to be happy Yau za mu yi farin ciki And we are going to drink together Za mu sha ruwan inabi tare And then he called the servant and the person came in and served all of them Sai ya kira bawa ya sa dukkan shi ya raba musu wa'annan ruwan inabi da And these were the great great grandchildren of Rika Wannan kaka ne kaka ne kaka ne Rika din ne But they opened their mouth Amma sai ya buska bude baki 
suka ce ku ya hakuri we do not drink ba ma shan giya this is the law which was given to us by our great great grandfather wannan shine dokar da kakane kakannin mu suka ba mu and we still follow his law kuma har yau muna bin wannan doka we still do exactly what he said that we should do muna bin abun da ya ga mana tun lokacin mu yi even though we are in the temple ko da yake muna wasu jadani and even though you are prophet jeremiah ko da yake kai ma annabi ne irmiya we will not drink bazamu sha ruwa annabi nan ba hallelujah hallelujah i wish for every one of us ina so ina bege na shine kowane da yau raise up a christian family we yamu gina christ gidana christianci which will last for generations wanda zai iya dawama ga tsara dewa nan gaba i am praying for you ina addu'a muku that in the future cewa nan gaba your great great grandchildren kakane kakanen ku we we'll say this is our family law za su ce wannan shine dokan iyalin mu my great great grandfather was a christian kakane kakanen mu shi christa ne my great great grandfather was from this church kakane kakanen mu yana daga wannan ikkilisiya ne my great great grandfather said this is our family law kakan mu ya ce wannan shine dokokin mu na iyali up to now amma kuma har wa yau we are still following muna bin wannan tafarki please none of you know my father yayi dukan ku ba wanda ya san ubana my father was a pastor for 40 years before he died baba na shi pastor ne na shekara 40 kafin ya mutu before my father became a pastor amma kafin baba ne ya zama pastor my father was a drunkard and a a, a marijuana smoker shi yana shan giya kuma yana shan wiwi and jesus saved him amma sai yesu ya cice shi hallelujah I remember when I was a small boy. Dan tuna lokacin yana nan kamar yaro karami. Ubana ya gaya mini. Our family. Ni cewa a gidan mu. Alcoholism is our sin. Shin giya buguwa shine zunubi. Don't go close to it. Kada ka je kusa da shi. When you go close to it. Dan ka je kusa da shi. It will catch you. Zai kama ka. And it will hold you. Kuma zai rike ka. My father said to me. Ba ubana ya gaya mini. I know. Nasani. Because I know how it was. Do me nasani da yake. Jesus removed me from that sin. Yes, we are treating the gawanchen zuri. So don't go near it. To kada ka je kusa da shi. And don't let your children go near it. Kada ka bar yaran ka je kusa da shi. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is what I'm talking about. Shi ne abun da nake fada a magana kai. A generation foundation. When gini wa tsara wanda za su iya dawama. Now I have only one son. Yanzu ina da yaro daya kadai. and i've told my son the same thing amana kuma na ga wa yaro na abinda ubana ya ga ya mini cewa dana your grandfather was a drinker kakanka mashayi ne mai buguwa ne amma yesu ya cice shi god saved him he never went back to alcohol bayan da yesu ya cice shi bai sake koma shin giya ba and your grandfather warned me not to touch it kuma kakanka ya cice mini kadan ko su kai taba and by the grace of god i have never touched it cikin alherin allah ban taba taba ba you are growing up yanzu kana girma you should know Kasani this is our family law wannan shine fam dokokin na iyalin mu ban ma za kusa amen amen and i am praying amma ina addu'a that one day my great great grandchildren cewa kakane kakane na nan gaba will tell the same story za su fada wannan tarihin hallelujah hallelujah jeremiah was looking for an example of obedience shi irmiya na neman misali ne na biyayya to show the children of israel that that is how they should follow god irmiya nuna wa ayi israila yanda za su bi allah and where did he turn amma ina ya juya he went to the family of rekab ya juyo zuwa iyali rekab their father was dead uban su ya mutu their grandfather was dead kakan su ya mutu but they were still following the rules that were given to them amma har yanzu suna bin dokokin da an ba su a iyalin su that is our goal shine mu fa mu raise up a christian family mu gina ecclesia na christa which will continue for generations wanda zai iya ci gaba zuwa tsara na nan gaba please we can turn to the book of deuteronomy za mu iya jiwa zuwa litafi mai mai tawar shari'a the book of deuteronomy chapter 6 mai mai tawar shari'a sura shida I want to give you a recipe today. Ina so in ba ku wani abun da za ku yi amfani da shi. This is not a recipe for food. Ba wai shi ɗan fin da recipe. Ɗan ɗan no ba ɗan ɗan no no abinci bane. It is a recipe for how to raise a family. Amma ɗan ɗan no ne ta yin da za mu gina iyali. Which will continue from generation to generation. Wanda za su iya ci gaba daga tsara zuwa tsara. Before I start to share with you, I want to just mention to you the power of prayer. Ina so in gaya muku ikon addu'a. 
It is important that we pray for our children and our grandchildren. I remember the story of Job. The Bible says Job used to wake up early in the morning. And he will go and make sacrifices for his children. Now we are in the New Testament. We are no more making sacrifices. But we can pray for our children. We can pray for our grandchildren. It is through the power of prayer that God can bring them back. If you are here today, maybe you have a child who is not following Christ. I am not condemning you. I know that pain. I understand that pain. Deep inside my own heart. But do not forget the power of prayer. Amen. Amen. Please, we are in Deuteronomy chapter 6. If you say to me, I want to raise a, ch- a family which will continue to follow God for many generations. These are the verses which come to my mind. Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 5. And you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. This is our first point. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You must love the Lord with all your heart. If you want to raise children who will follow God for many generations, then you as the parents need to love the Lord with all your heart. Our children are watching our lives every day. If our children see that we are fake, then they will also believe that Christianity is fake. And our children know us very well. If you get angry, your children will know. If you have a hidden sin, it is your children who will know. If your life does not match the word of God, it is your children that will know. So you want to raise a family that will last for generations. The first thing you must do is to love God with all of your heart. Let your family be a family where the love of Jesus is strong. Let the love of God God be a, a, a strong factor in your family. So that when your children are watching you, they will know that you are real. If you are making mistakes in your family, don't become discouraged. Be honest with your children. Your children will be ready to forgive you. But your children will not forgive you for being a hypocrite. So our first point, point number love God with everything in your heart. Please, we are now moving to verse 6. All of our verses come from Deuteronomy chapter 6. Verse 6 says this, and you must commit yourself to obey these commands wholeheartedly. You want your children to copy your life? You want your children to follow Christ? You must live out the word of God in your family. This verse says, commit yourself wholeheartedly to following these 
commands. We are talking about how to raise a family that will last. We have already agreed that Satan is working against Christian families. So what can I do? so that my family will last. Love God with all your heart and make a commitment to obey the Bible in your family. Then we move to verse 7. Repeat these things again and again to your children. Talk about the word of God when you are at home. And when you are on the road. When you are going to bed. And when you are getting up. Our third point is this. Teach your children. In the morning. In the night, at the table, when you are working together, when you are bathing your children, teach, teach, teach. Hallelujah. Every Christian, every Christian parent is called to be a Christian teacher. It is good that your children come to Sunday school. But the first teacher for the word of God in your children's life must be you. Because you are with your children all day long. And you have many opportunities to teach them. Teach them at every time. And in this way, the word of God will be settled into your children's hearts. Pastor, uh, when the pastor introduced me, he said that I have done a lot of church planting. And that is true. I planted churches in a village in a group of villages where there were no Christians. And I remember after 10 years of preaching the gospel in those villages and starting churches in those villages one morning early in the morning I was riding a bicycle through one of the villages and I passed by one of our Christian family houses and sitting on a mat outside of the house was the man and his wife and two children and they were reading the Bible together they didn't know that I saw them they didn't know that I was passing but I came home and I told my wife that day the church will stand the church will stand hallelujah. hallelujah when the people within the church are teaching their children the word of God the church will stand and I understand that some of you have a strong tradition of family worship. Tradition, right? Fam yes, you have Fa a tradition. Of family prayers. I want to encourage you. Don't let that go. Hold on to that. If you want your family to stand as a Christian family, family prayers must be a pillar within your family. It is the responsibility of the parents to teach the children the word of God. It's good that there is a Sunday school teacher. But you are the first teacher. 
May God give you that strength. So you want to have a Christian family? Keep repeating them to your children. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are moving to verse 8 of this same chapter. The word of God says, Tie these commands to your hands and wear them on your forehead as a reminder to you. I don't know whether you know this or not, but the Jewish people they used to write down the word of God and they will tie it on their hands and they will tie it on their foreheads to always remind them of the word of God. So what can we do today to help our children to follow God? We must have a Bible saturated environment. In every direction, our children should encounter the Bible. Bible verses on the wall. Bible verses in family prayers. Bible stories before the children sleep. Amen. Amen. When I was a small child, from the age of two, when it was time for me to sleep, my mother and father would turn on a Bible cassette tape. Playing only the Bible. And as we were falling asleep, we would listen to the Bible. They wanted the Bible to enter us in every way possible. How can you help your children to stand for the word of God? Fill their life with the Bible. Also in the same verse 7, it says that we should be teaching our children when we are waking up, when we are sleeping, when when we are working and when we are walking by the way to me this says do not allow the Bible to be something which happens only in the church. Don't separate your everyday life from the word of God. Let your everyday life be filled with the word of God. Right now with my family in Ghana, I have about uh, 25 children. Only four children are my own. But I have many children staying with me. Some of them are orphans. Some of them are students attending school. But right now they are doing a Bible memory challenge. I told the children that I will give them an amount of money if they are able to memorize the whole book of James. And the whole book of James is a big challenge. But you know they are working on it. When you look out of my house in the afternoon you will see somebody here reading his Bible. When you check you will see it is the book of James. Some of them have not yet learned to read. So you see them listening to the Bible on MP3. Some of them will be drilling each other. Let me quote to you. Then you also quote to me. And every time I see these things, it fills my heart with joy. We want the Bible to be 
a strong factor in our families. Please let's continue and look at verse 8. Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 8. Sorry, verse 9. Verse 9 says, Write them on the doorpost of your house and write them on your gates. Some people believe that this means you must write a Bible verse on your door. If you, if you want to do that, there's no problem. But I think what God is saying to us here is that the the word of God should be at the center of our daily lives. Anyway, everywhere our children are looking, the world is shouting to them. Please, if your children have access to a television, I beg you on my knees, be careful because Satan can use that to influence their minds. If your children have friends who are not Christians, be careful they can influence your children. And if your children have a phone, they wire. Danger zone. Danger zone. Danger zone. Please, I hope that as a parent, you can check your child's phone. Please, as a parent, you have a young child with a phone, I hope you can check that phone. I'm telling you, Satan is deceiving so many young people these days. These days you can Google something. Something which seems so innocent. And you will quickly find yourself into wickedness. And so God said, put my word on the doors of your house. Let the Bible be central in your family. Because we want our children to follow us in a foundation of a godly family. I know that we are facing a strong challenge. Satan is trying everything possible to take children away. Sometimes it is the influence in the schools. Sometimes it is social media. But we must be very vigilant. We must be very watchful and make sure that we are the ones putting information into our children. The tribe that I live with in Ghana they have this proverb a good chief has only one door to his compound. Please I think in some of your villages they still build compounds like this. Round, round, round rooms and a wall connecting them. And the proverb says a good chief has only one door to his compound. What does this mean? I have watched the chiefs. They have a place where they sit. And where they are sitting is a shaded place. But where they are sitting is a place that they can watch that door. Hallelujah. You as a man of God Raising a family to follow God. You as a mother who is raising children. You must also be able to sit and watch the gate. We are not talking about the door anymore. This is part of the gate. Television is part of the gate. Video is part of the gate. 
Your children's friends is part of the game. Sit in a place in your children's lives that you can watch. Where are you going? What time are you coming back? Who are you going to be with? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, some of you that is the way your parents raised you but now we are in modern times I get tired of people telling me anyway it's modern times Please, if we are going to raise our children to follow God some of these things must not change we must know where our children are we must know what is entering into our children. Something I have learned in our villages is that in Africa, people are very afraid of poison. In Africa, in America, I have never heard of somebody poisoning the food of another person. Maybe it happens. But I have never heard of it. But in Africa, we all know that poison in a food is a way of killing someone. And so many parents tell their children, you are going out. Do not eat any food outside of this house. If somebody gives you something, bring it here before you eat it. Why will they say this? They don't want somebody to poison their children. Well done. Well done. You have done well. But please don't be more afraid of poison for the stomach then you are afraid of poison for the mind. Your child is going to visit a friend. Tell him don't eat the food. But you don't tell him I don't want you to watch television there. So which poison are you worried about? Poison for the stomach or poison for the mind. So these verses that we have looked at they show us a picture of how to raise a Christian family. Show an example of love in the home. Love for Jesus and love for each other. Fill your children's minds with the word of God. Be very purposeful about it. Be very careful of what is entering into your children. Truly in the world today, the world is filled with poison. We cannot allow our children to be eaten anywhere. This world is trying to poison the minds of our children. We as parents must stand up to protect them. How do I raise a Christian family that will last for generations? God will help you. It is not only our efforts. God is working with us. But we as parents have a very important responsibility. As a man, God has called you to be a watchman. Watching. What is coming into my family? What is happening in my family? Is there any danger for my family? Is Satan putting any finger into my family? God has called you to be a watchman. And you wives or um, you are our wives. You are our assistants. You are spending all day with the children. You are to stand beside us. To influence the children for Christ. I will close with this comment. When we gathered here this morning, I was so blessed to see this 
this whole church full of naive farin ciki na gan wannan ecclesia cike da matasa but i was listening to the secretary giving the report amma ina jin shi secretary yana bada ruhotu and i don't understand very much hausa sai amma kuma ban gane hausa sosai but i understood he was giving the numbers of people who were present amma na gane yana bada number mutanen da sun kasance and he gave the number of children sai an bada number na yara and the number of children was almost the same number as the number of adults here sai number yara ko yara mu kuma ya zama kusan da na manya i'm happy that 1000 of you were here na ba na ji dadi cewa mutane kusan dubu daya su ana but i'm even more happy that 900 were there amma na fi jin dadi kuma akwai yara kusan no kusan Because all of you are already on your way to heaven. Domin dukan ku nan ku je wancin ku kuna hanyar tafiya sama. These children that we are fighting for. Wa'anan yaran ne muke fada da su. They are the next generation. Su ne tsarawan da suke tasu. They are the future of the church. Su ne wannan ikkilisiya zai hangi nan gaba. They are the sheep that we are looking for to bring them into Jesus fold. Su ne wa'anan mutanen da muke so mu kawo su zuwa Yesu Kristi gaba da Yesu Kristi. So when I heard the numbers this morning. Da naji numbers sa wannan sai da safe be with that number na ji dadin numbers su da safe because if we are not bringing our children along do me idan ba mu kawo yayan mu zuwa ikkilisiya tare da mu there's no future for to ya nuna cewa ba hangin gaba mana closing where we started ina rufe inda muka fara remember pharaoh kun tuna shi fir'auna pharaoh said to moses fir'auna ya ce wa musa you the men can go to ah to kuma zan za ku tafi ku yi bauta wa allah your wives behind amma ku bar matan ku a baya ku bar yaran ku a baya you can go and worship god by yourself ku ma za jin za ku je ku yi sujada wa allah ka dai amma me ma musa ya fada musa ya ce fir'auna we are going to go and worship our god za mu je mu yi sujada wa allah we are going along with our wives amma za mu tafi tare da matan whether you like it or not ko ka ki ko ka so we are going with our wives zamu tafi da yan matan we are also going with our children zamu kuma tafi da yaran mu even the babies har da gyara kanana ma da suna shan mama kuma har da dabbobi we will not leave a single foot behind ba zamu bar ko mutun daya kafa a baya ba and i want to encourage you today ina so in karfafa ku a yau come to this meeting da kuka zo wannan taron when you are leaving this meeting idan za ku bar wannan taron make that commitment in your heart ya zama wannan shine abun da za ku fada zuciyar ku tell Your Lord Jesus. Ku ga wa ubangiji Yesu Kristi. I am bringing these children along to heaven. Zan kawo yara nan nan tare da ni zuwa mulkin sama. Ubangiji. Our family will continue to follow you to heaven. Yari na za su ci gaba da binka har tara masu zuwa. And then tell your enemy. Sai ku ga wa shi magabtan da. Fir'auna. Satan. Satan. Whether you like it or not. Ko ka ki ko ka so. My wife will go with me. Matana za ta tafi tare da ni. Whether you like it or not. Ko ka ki ko ka so. My children will go with me. Yara na za su tafi tare da ni. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. I pray that blessing upon you. Amen. Now your children go with you. May your children follow you to the church. May your children follow you in loving Jesus. May your children follow you to heaven one day. 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 Your children Hallelujah